sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. <laughs>
That is not your TV glitching, ladies and gentlemen. That is me, your cameraman, your producer, your stream master. Rory McCosker here. Part-time employee of Curling Stadium. Friend of Jerry Gertz, John Benson. James Gordon from the whole Curling Stadium crew. Here with you on this Friday night. Ethan Sampson, John Schuster. A beautiful Four Seasons Curling Club. Just making sure all these audio levels are right and that I'm not screaming your ear off at home. Big shot here. John Schuster able to kind of rearrange things in the top 12 foot. That was quite a great wall of yellow rocks. Protecting the house, but it wasn't doing Team Schuster much good. There's none of them counting shots, so something had to happen there. Watching this end, I was wondering if they may have left that situation a little too long, but they seemed comfortable hanging around, gaining positioning in the front of the house, but now it's going to be pretty tough to score two. You're going to have to move one of your own yellow stones and roll your shooter in somehow. Team Sam's with a pretty good opportunity to bury one here and get that force in the second end. Like I mentioned, my name is Rory McCusker, part-time employee for Curling Stadium. Um, love streaming, love video production. Used to work for Jerry Gertz full-time with CurlingZone.com and have now kind of rejoined the crew to bring you some of this live streaming action. Just keeping you company here tonight, not pretending to be an expert or anything like that, but just like you, want to tune in on Friday night and see some 
high quality curling in action. So, draw around. Try to get the force cooking here. Ethan Sampson. Let's follow this one in. A little bit of camera control. Well, I am producing this game from home here in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. See if I can't get you folks a better look at this early game here using our various camera setups. Taking the guard that is gonna roll in for Shot Rock. It appeared as if Team Samson was already shot one and two, but in case that side red wasn't the wasn't second shot, that is gonna help them out here. Team Schuster's gonna look at opportunities for two, but they're not gonna find any. Good work here by the young Samson team out of Jaska, Minnesota. First two end, first two ends. Made a nice double on his last one in the first end to force, I guess, a blank. Remove two Schuster stones in the back of the rings. Now in the second end, some good work to force John Schuster. Attempt this shot for one. Still has to make it. Ooh, the cut, the cut sweep by Colin Huffman, I don't think saved it. I think that was a steal of one for Team Samson here in the second end. We'll find out soon after this break. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, pawn spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back, third end here. Pretty nice center guard. To start things off, that will occupy that center line. No tip zone. That guard's here to stay. Apologies if I leave my audience here in silence for a little while. There's quite a few things to, quite a few boxes to check and things to take care of here. Running these streams, a lot of little stuff to keep an eye on. But when I get a little bit of free time, we can do fun stuff like this. Split screen, follow, shooter. Not gonna see that on TV. I don't know if I could get things a little smoother, then it would actually be enjoyable. Curling Stadium live production here. This is this is not your traditional media, legacy media production. I am, this is by fans, for fans here. I am just a curling fan with control of these cameras, <laughs> trying to enjoy the same game as all of you. So let, let me know in the chat how we're doing, if you want to see an overhead view, if you think the cameras are working well, let me know. 
kind of challenging as I switch the cameras from, from one computer and control the cameras from another, but we'll get the hang of it here. See if we can't show you all eight players on the ice. As they do their thing. Intense sweep, intense finishing sweep to this shot. Those freeze shots are so sweep dependent. As you try to jostle and um, fight for angles in the house and just above the house, elite sweepers can make all the difference there. To get the shot close, of course, you need the shooter to, to do their job, but once once the rock is on a good line and has some good weight, it's up to the sweepers to get that perfection out of the stone. So at this level, at this high, high end men's curling level, the sweepers are more often than not the difference in, in an, end, an end and therefore the game itself. Sweepers waiting for this one, want to get some curl out of it. Just a little heavy there, not much the sweepers could do with that. You can see at the end there, they're going for a bit of a plan B, try to get the back button and get on them. They were able to maintain a, a decent angle in the forefoot there, but that stone at the end of the day is behind the T-line. It'd be pretty easy for Team Schuster to maneuver their way around that situation. Second, Colin Hoffman. Some more big weight. In the second end, there's a big run back from Colin. Skip, John Schuster's asking. Same thing with him this time. Looks like they're just clearing the center guard off. Nice lucky little jam and roll there. That'll be another stone for Ethan Sampson to deal with. Bit of a discussion here, wondering what's going to be their most powerful option. Seeing no real need to deal with the stones right now. They like how their forefoot situation is looking. Team Sampson going to call for a center guard. Staying aggressive here. Love to see it. Make Team Schuster deal with those stones in the forefoot. They like how those angles look right now. As a team without hammer, center guard is your lifeline. It is the most important rock in play. Especially when there's overlaps and angles and rocks in the rings, that center guard is going to keep, keep you with an option, even if you end up missing a shot here and there. The only thing you can't do as a team without hammer, relying on a center guard, is of course tick that center guard off. Kind of cruel, because most of your shots are gonna end up being in that area. So, Challenging shots Team Sampson have kind of set themselves up for, but the reward is great. Team Schuster is ignoring that center guard, making their move now to rearrange things in the rings. May help, may vindicate that center guard call. Colin Huffman, some soft weight here. Trying to play a tap and roll. Make contact with a rock in the top of the forefoot. This one's been curling hard on them the, the whole way down. It is going to overcurl. Striking their own stone on the wrong side. They're hoping to get that on the high side, the outturn side. They're going to smash that rock towards the forefoot, but an overcurl is going to place them in a somewhat ugly overlap situation. Hey, Ethan Sampson just called the center guard on the last one, and it paid off. Now they'll lay another one up there. See if they can't guard out this end and try and score these two rocks in the rings. Sweeper's going hard on this one the whole way. Got to make sure it's over. Oh, great scrub by the front end. 
that's a big stone to get over. Did not want to hog that one, especially after so much success early on in the end. My sheet says Kevin Tuma, third rock thrower for Ethan Sampson. Hey, Brandon, I'm just going to jump into your pack for a sec. Are you good? Yep. Okay. Looks like commentary is playing on your game, so. Is it? Yeah, you're on pack two? Yep. I didn't hear anything. I had the volume on for one the last and two while. and off. three and four. Unbelievable. What an incredible shot. Chris flies. Do something different. You know, it, it ended up removing Schuster's two stones in the front of the rings. You know, even though those were Schuster stones, I think at this point in the end, obstacles in the center of the, the ice were not Team Schuster's friend. I think Team John Schuster's A-OK -okay with removing those two stones in front. So, double peel. Okay, it's yours again, Brandon. And some rearranging up front. Team Samson still trying to guard out this end, see if they can't protect these two rocks in the forefoot for a little while longer. Oh, that really soft one here. You found something then? Yeah, I just turned I just uh, turned it off, the commentary. Looked like a bit of a soft release there. Got that one curling and, and slowing down right away. Sweepers had to gun it just to get it over. Sometimes I don't really know. Oof. Just one. So close to clearing both of those those rocks, but had to settle with just one. Leaves the shooter in a really good spot. Is the good news? It's been an interesting fight this end. Team Sampson uh, really gaining the favor early. A lot of early success with those hits and rolls. Now trying to continually defend this forefoot. They've made it to skip stones. With a pretty favorable situation in front of them. Two more rocks to come from Team Sampson. Let's see if they can't choke off access to that forefoot. Forced John Schuster to another tough shot just for a single point. Hard sweep to try and get some curl. Don't want to jam this one. They will jam. But uh, but they'll they'll keep the rock around. It, unfortunate that it that it did tick that red one out of the forefoot. Kind of removes the danger from the, sc the tight scoring area for Team Schuster. John's got a bit of a decision now. Is he going to try and hit and roll, stay shot rock underneath the, the center line guard, try and score two that way, or is he satisfied with removing this this controlling stone in the front of the rings? Going for a double, perhaps keep the keep the house clean. Might try to keep the blank option open. I can't hear exactly what they're saying to each other, so it's tough to know. Looks like a nice control weight hit. That would suggest they're trying to get that inside roll.
Team Schuster trying to make something out of this ugly end. One rock, two rocks. It does jam. Looks like they were going for the double takeout. It's going to allow Team Samson another opportunity to choke off this forefoot, replace that, that rock in the top four that they had earlier, perhaps even put it in a, in a better position. Force Team Schuster to a tough draw to the, the button for a single point. Didn't even look at removing that Schuster stone in the side of the 12 foot to get their force that way. Nope, going right for the, the most perfect place to put, this, put, put their stone. Staying aggressive all end long, Team Samson has been. Skip Ethan Sampson with his last stone. Third end. Draw to the forefoot. Try and manufacture a steal. One or two. Worst case scenario. Letting Team Schuster draw for one. Sweepers are waiting for this one. Waiting for the curl. They're starting to get some now. Sweepers will try to finish this. right where they tap the broom. That's a perfect shot from Team Samson. Nice team call there. Sweepers recognizing that the weight was there. They had to wait for it to curl. Once it did start curling, hog line in. Front end pounded that rock over to, to get it buried in the top of the forefoot. It'll do the trick. Force Team Schuster to a draw for one. Skip John Schuster. Throwing against two stones here in the third end. Gave up a steal in the second. Sweepers are gunning this one hard out of his hand. Never off. Heads down the whole way. They will not get it there. It will be another steal, this time two points for the young team out of Minnesota. Team Sampson. John Schuster will try and bounce back. In the fourth end with him, and we come back. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back, third end here. Team Sampson, steal of two in the second end. Gives him a three point advantage over Team John Schuster. Really sharp play so far from the young team, Team Sampson.
Just figuring out some media stuff in the background here. Apologies for the distractions. Trying to get my commercials ready to rock when the time comes, but okay. Back to curling. Looks like a textbook start to this end. Rock in the forefoot, corner guard. Center guard to cover rock in the forefoot. Uh, rock in the side of the 12 foot to come behind corner guard. This is your textbook lead on lead. Both teams staying aggressive, playing their own game. Not too concerned with the other one is doing. That each team, each skip has an idea of what they want to see in front of them. And they've achieved that. So third rock for the team without hammer, Team Samson. Trying to clog up the middle. Keep play centered in this center line, four foot axis. Whereas Team Schuster will be biding their time, setting something up on the side of the rings for when they eventually address things down the middle. And with five rocks down the sheet, free guard zone rule is expired. It is time to peel. The real question ends up being, what does Team Schuster want to do with their shooter stone? Do they want to roll it to the side? Do they want to completely lose it? Colin Hoffman will try to make some rocks move here. More big weight. Colin's first stone has been a, a big weight hit. All three ends so far. One and two they will remove. Pretty good work by Colin Hoffman. That is enough for Team Sampson to now chase. Two really good stones of theirs were just removed, so maybe time to change gears. Removing the Schuster stone in the rings now to lie to. Well executed shot. Nice little roll back to the middle. That's about as good as he could do. John Schuster, fourth end. Since his time ticking away here. Opts to go aggressive, ignores the two Samson stones in the rings and goes to replace their rock around those corner guards. They do have two corner guards on the same side now, thus solidifying that area of the house as their strongest area to play to. They will do everything they can, Team Schuster, to place their rocks in that side of the 12 foot where their corner guards are. Waiting for this one to curl, seems a bit heavy. Rock sailing a bit deep here. It was never going to be shot stone anyway, so buried is better than high. And that rock is buried. Interesting change of pace here for Team Samson after playing quite aggressively all game. They have... Uh, Got an advantage down the middle of the ice. They have two rocks that are very tough to double. So Team Samson kind of changing gears into a more defensive style of play. Taking out the most threatening Schuster Stone, which is, of course, this guard. Wow. Barely escape with, without knocking their own stone off the button. Kevin Tuma hitting that rock quite thin. Looks like they're throwing some weight now. We'll try to hit and roll. Create a frozen angle. Just slightly overrolled. Chris Plies. Very close to making that one happen. 
slightly disappointing results for how well he threw that one. Another hit coming from Kevin Tuma here. I want to keep this Red Rock in the rings. One and two, Samson Rocks. Looks like a double opportunity is available. They are quite close together. Pretty thick double. decided to freeze it's the best course of action team Schuster wanting to score two here at least willing to put it on the line to score multiple points foregoing any shot at the blank end here team Schuster has decided someone is scoring this end better be us better be two or more Sweeper's hard on this the whole way down. See how far they can drag this. Skip John Schuster encouraging them, tapping his broom, coming in to help. That's a great sweep to get that rock that far. That was a very light stone. Sweepers John Landsteiner and Colin Hoffman really working on that one hard right out of the thrower's hand. Good stamina there, full 25 second sweep. Tough thing to do to go full, full bore the whole way down. More game planning. This has been a tactically sound game from Team Sampson, uh, executing their strategy to a T nearly every end so far. This end was slightly was interesting because after three nearly perfect shots, a, a draw to the forefoot, a center guard, and then a, a draw to the top eight, they had their center line occupation going perfectly. A double from Colin Huffman kind of shook Team Sampson a little bit and Skip Ethan Sampson decided to play a couple shots chasing Team Schuster to the wing. Ended up moderately successful, but as you can see, they, the Team Schuster was still able to retain that rock in the back of the forefoot, even though corner guards were peeled off. Now, Team Sampson fighting a few, few Team Schuster stones in the rings, none of which are very easy to remove. Choosing to go with the most threatening stone, which is this recently rock, thrown rock in the top of the forefoot. Full sweep, end to end. Pow, through the hole. They will lose one of their own, but that's all right. Would have been really nice to be sitting three, but uh, still removes the most threatening Schuster stone. They, they will leave a double for Team Schuster to sit two, quite separated. But the main danger has been removed. Team Schuster working hard to gain back the advantage in this game. Even if they do score two points here, it's gonna it's gonna be a battle. They'll have to win most ends until about the seventh or eighth, where there, there's finally a little bit of leniency. But that three point math is is a killer. This one's floating on them a little bit. That rock has. Only drifted further away from center line, not back to it. One stone, two stones. Won't be able to remove the second one. Kind of got that inside out, got that double over the face. They were, however, able to hang on to their shooter in the side of the 12 foot. That may come, that may be important. As uh, Team Sampson looks to play a draw shot, not trusting that outside path play a hit and roll. Very interesting. So in a way, Team Schuster has accomplished a certain goal. They've, they've kept Team Sampson away from hitting. You'd hate to give up a shot for three here, but with a well-placed stone, uh, it will actually force Team Schuster to one. And with a moderately okay-placed stone, 
it'll still only leave a shot for, for two. All options on the table. Team Samson's aggression. Continuing to shine through here. And that's what happens when you're playing some of not only America's, but the world's best in Team John Schuster. Sometimes you got to take the initiative here, especially early. Ethan Sampson's last stone in the fourth end. Up three points with a, a shot rock in the back of the house, trying to lie two in such a way that won't leave a double and ideally won't even leave a tap back or a shot for two. Sweeper's waiting on this one, trying to get a perfect freeze angle. Stone's pretty heavy. They will get the freeze. A little tap back with it. I think that's... Uh, Two Team Samson. What a shot. A little scary how he didn't use his sweepers, but it's going to do the trick. It's going to force John Schuster to a single point. Wow, really strong play by the young team from Minnesota here tonight. Forcing Team Schuster to, to make the tough shots. Not a lot of misses and some really confident skipping. Some tactical decisions that are indicative of you know, a confident, uh, confident, well-adjusted team, Team Samson. John Schuster shooting against two stones, trying to get a single point here in the fourth end. Sweepers like this one a little better than John's last draw. Off and on clean. This is looking pretty precise. There it is. The single point for John Schuster. Gives up the hammer, though. Team Sampson with a two-point lead and the hammer going into the fifth end. I have a feeling we're going to see some pretty interesting curling in these next two ends. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back. Really well played game so far. Team Samson really putting the gears on, on Team John Schuster. Uh, taking the initiative, the first three rocks of every end so far have been a clear advantage for Team Samson. Samson. So getting the early edge and successfully defending that. It's been fun to see. Team Schuster's looking for a little more preciseness in their shots. They've had some opportunities, make some good hit and rolls and such, such other shots that would uh, kind of give them the advantage back. Just haven't quite been able to make those yet. High center guard is going to be answered with a, a draw round. Sweeper's really digging on this one. They're hoping to get a little more rings. They'll have to settle, settle with full 12. Might be a good controlling stone. Also might kind of come, you know, bite them in, in the butt with how high it is and how overlapped that could be. That may turn into a sketchy, messy scenario at a certain point. Tough to say at this point in the end. John Landsteiner trying to make a corner freeze. Gain control of the run back angle of that stone. Just jockeying for angles and positioning early in this end. May as well get that on the center line. Yep. That's going to be A-OK -okay for Team John Schuster trying to steal 
in this fifth end. Overlap center guards, not such a bad thing. That, that will help determine play into the forefoot behind those guards. Second stone, lead Marius Klinas. Linus. Been a strong sweeping game so far for Marius and second Coleman, Coleman Thurston. Waiting for this one to curl. Don't want to be heavy here with Hammer. That will roll just a, a little bit deep. A little bit deep on them. Still occupying an important scoring area, but Team John Schuster is going to look at that stone as an opportunity. An opportunity to freeze on top of it and really determine play into the centerline button area here, which is the goal for John Schuster. Down two without hammer. They need to center play around that button. Make sure if their opponent scores, it's only one point. Perhaps trying to manufacture a steal themselves. Second, Colin Hoffman. This is the first time his uh, third third rock, his first stone of the end, has not been a heater. He's been chucking a lot of bombs lately, trying to undo the damage that the first two or three stones of Team Samson have been doing. This is his first opportunity to make an aggressive play himself. Let's see how they handle it. Got the wrong end there. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Decent angle, could have been better. Not shot rock yet, but uh, that rock's only got one direction to go, and that's right back onto the red. So that's going to do the trick for, for Team Schuster. I'll be happy with that. Second, Coleman Thurston will try to respond. Dealing with those Schuster center guards, this is a tall order. These are fairly spaced apart, and the overlap is quite favorable for a jam. So. This will have to be a quite a precise double double takeout here. Sweeping to get some curl. One and only one. That's all right. Not a bad way to miss, but it's not gonna it's not gonna cut it if Team Samson is gonna regain control of the center of the rings there. Peel replace, peel replace only favors Team Schuster as the end gets closer to its conclusion. And Colin Huffman will replace the guard. This will be the softest shot he's thrown all game. Tries to get out to the broom. Nice poke to keep the rock from over curling. A little bit of an early sweep might indicate he's a little inside. Sweeper's just trying to maintain separation between these two guards. Maybe too late. They may be... Right up on it. Skip John Schuster trying to make a bit of a judgment call, and you can see the body language on Chris Plies and John Landsteiner there. That is not the angle they were looking for. Those two rocks are going to fly pretty easily and might even clip the, the Samson red to go backwards into the, the other Schuster yellow. Yeah, you can see Skip Ethan signaling with his broom. That may have been a very costly mistake in where that rock was ended up. Tolerated to stop. Really big opportunity here. Team Sampson, clear all the Schuster stones out of play. Big weight, as required. That rock is really curling already. Sweeper hard on it. One, two, three. Exactly as planned. Team Schuster Stones get out of the way. Those frozen guards pounded back into the red rock in the top eight foot, sent, sent that one back onto the yellow Schuster Stone in the four foot. Looks like the middle yellow survived, but has rolled to near irrelevancy on the edge of the 12 foot. Without hammer, biters don't mean much. Sometimes with hammer, you can find a way to bring them back into play, but in Team Schuster's scenario here, it's not going to mean too much. They more or less have to start all over again. T 
Team Schuster using what, what they have, which is a rock in the back of the forefoot. They'll attempt to freeze on that stone. Make the best out of this situation. Really nice sweep call there. Gets the rock in a, no, not quite a frozen position, but a fairly controlling position. To remove that yellow, you're likely going to lose the red in the back of the forefoot. Might be better off just to accept that that rock in the back of the forefoot is, is going to leave regardless. Ethan Sampson signaling for hack weight, so he might have an idea about how to keep that rock around while rolling aggressively with his shooter. Not sure it's there, but they're going to give it a crack. Third, Kevin Tuma. Got the soft weight. Inside sweeper close. Trying to make a curl now. This rock looks pretty close. Nice manageable weight. They'll be able to deal with this. Trying to get that last finish. Boom. Got the angle. Got the roll. Avoided the jam with their back one. That's, that's the best shot of the game so far from Kevin Tuma. Two really big opportunities in this end. Capitalized on by Team Sampson. First Coleman Thurston makes the double peel run back that Team Schuster left. And then to follow it up, Kevin Tuna, Tuma, really nice hack weight hit and roll. Got Team Schuster really looking at a lot of trouble here. But Team Schuster, after being forced to one in the fourth end, go down two without hammer, knew it was game time. It was uh, already determined that this end was going to be a messy, risky um, quest to to occupy the forefoot, to force play into the forefoot, and in a way, Team Schuster has accomplished that. Problem is, they're playing to the forefoot against three Team Sounds encounters, and that one is just never going to curl up enough for them. Weight was not bad. They could have done something with that if the line was a little better, but whether they misread the ice and, and how much that was going to curl or whether Chris Pies got that rock out a little bit, it was beyond the control of the sweepers. Leave that one with where it lies. It's going to be quite a two-shot uh, order from for Skip John Schuster to try and fight his way back into that scoring area. It's already looking quite ugly. Team Sampson with yet another opportunity. Really tighten up that scoring area. Take control of the front of the forefoot. Perhaps even lie three. No obvious triple. This is still a tricky shot. You don't want to leave this light and give some extra protection for John Schuster's eventual draw or freeze. This looks significantly inside. Bit of a whiff there from, from Kevin Tuma. Got over the top of that one again. He did the same thing in the, the third end, I believe. Really just letting that rock curl curl hard out of his hand and not a lot of an extension to give it the weight that it needed I think that that similar rock in the third end ended up in about the same spot so opens the door for John Schuster to make good on that previous freeze now with a slightly bigger pocket to draw to if they manage to not bump anything around this this stone is going to be really really difficult to, perhaps even impossible to remove Taking a shade less ice than Chris Plies had, indicating they may have thought they got caught in a straighter spot, but... Skip John Schuster will certainly remember how that last one of Chris has moved. He'll be sure not to make the same mistake. Seems like a, a good amount of line on this one as well. Third Chris Plies signaling that there's lots of room. Sweepers want to go for weight. Switching the angle of their brushes to try and encourage curl while carrying distance a little further. We'll watch it from the overhead. Trying to get some distance out of this one. They will come up short. A favorable angle. But we're just getting a little too late in the end to be missing the forefoot and, and not obtaining shot rock. There's only one rock remaining from Team Schuster. Third Kevin Tuma and Skip Ethan Sampson are just thinking about where can we place this rock that's going to make it real difficult for Schuster to sneak one in there. 
They're looking at high forefoot to ensure they're not leaving any backing. Force Team Schuster to play that soft weight tap back using the, the curl of the rock to get around the center line, around the two somewhat center guards on the left-hand side there. Team Schuster tapping their yellow rock in the top eight foot backwards. Skip Ethan Sampson just thinking to himself, where can I put this stone of mine that's going to prevent that, that potential tap back from ever reaching the forefoot in the first place? Looks like they've determined about a quarter tucked behind the yellow stone. Worst case scenario, they finish a little bit high and get a corner freeze. But taking away this outturn path is going to lead to to good things for Team Samson. I mean, even if they don't take away the tap angle, if they occupy that outturn draw path, it's just there's really only one way into the scoring area for Team Schuster, and that's to, to tap back. There's a rock in the top eight foot, so there is a perfect spot here. I think that Skip Ethan Samson can put his stone to take away both the outturn draw and the outturn tap back for Team Schuster. Boy, a really well-played game and a, a tactically risky and, and aggressive game from Team Samson. It's paid off so far. 3-1 lead with Hammer. Team Samson sensing an opportunity to choke off this game from, from the former Olympic champions and uh, you know, field-leading team in, in Team John Schuster. Big shot here on Ethan Sampson's first one in the fifth end. Steady sweep off the bat. Doesn't look overly light, but the sweeper's definitely working on this one early. Trying to respond to information from the third on the line. Looks like this is over curling. They'll try to get the corner freeze. Don't want to move this yellow too much. I think that I think that overcurled. Overcurled on them and was just a touch light. So it may take back take away this uh, this tap back. But it certainly didn't take away an outturn draw opportunity here. And with that overlap, there will be nothing to run back for Team Samson. So definitely a missed opportunity there. Uh, a really exact shot that was called. And of course it would, was difficult and Skip Ethan Sampson did not miss it by much, really only two feet of weight and about half a rock of line, but enough of a miss that it will open the door for Team John Schuster. And you know what, they've, they've now missed this shot twice. They've had two looks at it. The odds just keep going up of Team Schuster finally finding that weight and line combination to make this shot perfectly. Brief little exchange between sweepers John Landsteiner, Colin Huffman, and thrower John Schuster. Everyone establishing with where this rock needs to stop and the priorities here. Strong slide and throw from Skip John Schuster. John Landsteiner poking his head up, trying to judge this rock. May have been on this one a little early. They're waiting for Curl yet again. I hate to miss outside again on this path. And that's what they'll do. Team Schuster just could not figure that out turn draw path out. Outside miss by Chris Plies. A little bit light from Skip John Schuster. And then another outside miss from John Schuster. Uncharacteristic to miss the same path that many times in a row. We'll leave the door open with some backing. A more or less open draw for three here for Team Samson. Got away with one there. As we mentioned, Team John Schuster had three opportunities to, to lay a freeze in there and really kind of take the end away from, from Team Samson. But Chris supplies last stone and both of John Schuster's couldn't quite make it happen. Team Sampson looking to capitalize on five really strong ends here tonight. Last stone, fifth end. Getting caught on that, that outside spot that Team Schuster 
seem to get caught on. Trying to sweep it for Curl, but it's not doing much. Able to get just enough movement. That's a count of three for Team Samson. Take a really controlling. Six to one lead over Team John Schuster. Three ends to go. Strong end in the sixth. Could, could vault Schuster right back into this game. They'll be going for two or three points, or maybe even more, when we come back. It can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back, Sixth End. It's been a really entertaining game here. Skip John Schuster had a couple ends cooking up where they thought they were going to get that multi-point score, but some really consistent play by Team Samson has both denied Team Schuster's aggressive efforts and when the hammer has been in, in Team Samson, Samson's hands, they've made good on it. Score of three in the fifth end. Game story. Samson uh, forcing Schuster into a blank. Schuster did have some, some rocks going, trying to get a multiple point score in the first end, but a nice double on Ethan Sampson's last one. Limits the damage, forces a blank end. Second end, failed draw, or failed hit and roll, I should say. Leads to a steal of one. Third end, really tightly controlled house by Team Sampson. First three rocks, uh, occupied the forefoot, successfully defended the whole end, they ended up stealing two. Fourth end, Team Schuster finally does get drawn, forced to one point. Some more strong play by Team Samson, occupying the middle of the house and after a, a made double run back by Colin Huffman. Samson, uh, Team Samson chasing to the wing successfully for three or four shots in a row and taking away any multi-score end opportunity from Team Schuster. And then in this fifth, this fifth end, this last end that we just watched, Team Samson uh, once again Winning the trades, winning the hit and roll battles, winning the tap freeze, um, you know, jockeying for positioning in the forefoot, just winning all of their their one on one battles, all the way up the lineup, setting up a shot for three and making good on it. Skip Ethan Sampson uh, did kind of leave the door open with his first shot for John Schuster to make a nice freeze, take the end away, but three shots in a row, Team Schuster could not figure out. That outturn draw path left Team Samson with a more or less open draw for three. Here we are in the sixth end. With Team Schuster pouring it on here, trying to find their way back into the game. Realistically, they need three points. Team Schuster needs three points in the sixth end to make it a two score game. That way, they could tolerate a force in the seventh end. It would make it a three-point game in the eighth end. Schuster could then score three to tie the game. It's realistically what could happen. If Schuster only gets two here, goes down three, they would have to steal in seven and steal two in eight. Very tall order. So with three points here, Schuster can get back into a realistic position to, uh, to tie and then win this game. So that's what they'll try to do. Schuster throwing center guards because um, they're too 
down this many points, that, that might be the strategy. Tempt Team Samson into leaving those rocks alone as long as they're covering the center line. Always knowing that, that a shot like this would be coming later. A shot to split the guards off the center line. And that will be this shot by Colin Huffman. Trying to throw about a back four weight, back line weight, and split these guards up. Looks like they'll do exactly that. It's a nice call, nice throw. Nice make by Colin Hoffman. That just turned that tightly occupied centerline area into a more spread out guarding situation. Many run backs, tap backs, promotion opportunities available for Team Schuster now. If and when the middle eventually becomes clear, Team Schuster will have options both on the four foot line and on the eight foot line there. Ethan Sampson just programmed his mind into Operation Get Rid of Yellow Stone, so I'm not sure this is the most dangerous stone here. In fact, I'd say the center guard is, is actually the least dangerous of these two. I'd be, I'd be peeling on the yellow guards, but he sees a double here, so if they can make that, of course, real good. Trying to remove two Schuster stones with one rock. Curl sweep right away, trying to get a piece of this thing. One, and that's all. That's all they get. And now you can see why why I don't think that that Schuster Rock was the most dangerous one at all. In fact, that kind of denied access to these angles in the forefoot. And well, in my opinion, I think Team Samson has just made accessing this area a little bit easier for Team Schuster. So. Colin Huffman trying to take advantage of the new opportunity to freeze or tap. Sweeper's pretty confident here, letting this one ride. We'll watch from the overhead as it comes in. Ooh, kind of unlucky, gets through everything there. I think they were hoping for a little tick off of that yellow on the right. The, <laughs> I guess we're looking at it from two different ways. Didn't quite get their frozen scenario that they were looking for. This is going to be an awfully hard stone to remove, though, for Team Snaps. And I think if you send a screamer right down the center line, it gets rid of everything. But they may be trying this run back. It's a more reliable angle if they can get there. Third, Kevin Tumas, first stone. Sweepers are signaling this is up, so they must be playing some kind of soft weight here. Oh, they're trying to get the amount of curl necessary to make this run back. That is curling, that's for sure. Wow. Such patience. Leaving that rock alone, getting the absolute maximum amount of movement to make that run back. Boy, what a shot. Team Schuster, once again, will just have to do a little bit better. Not not very precise with where they're leaving these stones. Whether it's a, a throwing communication or sweeping error, who knows. But Team Schuster's just not quite left their rocks in the exact spot that they were planning on leaving them. And it's left some opportunities, some easier opportunities for Team Samson to remove. But calling this stone up. John Landsteiner really gunning it to keep it straight. There's an angle that John Schuster wants to see here. Let's see if they can make it. Little tap. <coughs> Excuse me. Very interesting. Well, we can see from our straightaway angle here, not a lot of yellow showing. Ethan Sampson recognizing that the only way he's going to give up a bunch of points here is by leaving this guard in place. So may as well take the opportunity right now while they're still lying. Uh, two, two stones. Get rid of this guard. Don't need to make a play on the inside yellow just quite yet. If they were to screw up somehow in hitting that yellow on the eight foot, they may create a jam and really create some trouble for themselves. So that's a good, uh, that's a good experienced call by Skip Ethan Sampson recognizing that corner guard was the only way he was really going to get in a lot of trouble. So, 
should have more open opportunities to remove Schuster Stones after that, unless, of course, John replaces that guard. But Schuster knows they need points, and they need them now, so got to put these rocks in the rings. Chris Plies, second stone. Trying to create some angles that'll make their yellow rocks more difficult to remove. A little down, says Colin Huffman. Watching this one sail in. Looks pretty good. Very interesting. They let it die early. They let it kind of come to a stop in the top 12 foot there. Ooh, I do not think that was intentional. Colin Hoffman kind of keeling over, offering a bit of an apology to Chris Plies. Sorry, bud. Not sure why we gave up on that one. Now, it could be that... I'm not sure who's third shot here, but Team Samson shot one and two. If that top red is, is shot three, I don't know if there's much of a need to really go after any yellow stones right now. Skip John Schuster's only got two left, and how is he going to remove all four of your red rocks with, uh, with only two stones left? I'm not so sure. I would be playing another one into the eight foot here. If you give up two, so be it. Not sure why they think they need to address this this yellow stone top of the 12 foot. I think they see a double takeout. If they can just catch it on the high side, on the outturn side, breeze it past. Breeze it past the, the red stone in the 12 foot. They might slash that, that yellow onto the other yellow, thus removing both stones. That must be the goal here. Yep, Ethan Sampson, keeping the pedal to the metal. This has been their strategy all game long, and it has paid off. Some more aggression, some more all-or-nothing tactical decisions here. Ethan Sampson's first stone in sixth end, going for a very tough double. Nothing on it. And they will jam it into their own stone in the fourth foot. See, that's what I was afraid of. I wasn't so sure they needed to go for that top yellow. Now, they will remove the stone. So, primary goal is achieved. Yellow stone has been removed, although I think that does make John Schuster's work a little easier. It's it's one less stone in the forefoot that he will then eventually have to move. And I guess if the goal was to give up two, uh, that, did, that did bring Team Sampson closer to that goal. However... I think it was Team Schuster that had quite a bit of hard work to do in order to move those those stones off the forefoot, especially if you lob another one in there somewhere. Now two stones have been removed. The top yellow, of course, and the more controlling red stone in the back of the button. Team Schuster just trying to organize how they're going to get rid of these red stones and somehow find a way to count their remaining two rocks. Like I said, Team Schuster really going for the three here. You can see them signaling on the far far wing. Try to lie fourth shot. Hope that Samson leaves some type of double after his his next stone and then make that double on, on John Schuster's last rock. The other option, of course, is to make the double now. Lie two now. Or perhaps make a run back play on their own stone which is what they seem to be signaling at right now. Find a way to lie to that way. Looks like they've settled on a run back. They'll try to leave two stones in the eight foot not really caring too much if they're shot two just leave their stones in a tough place for team samson to double them off i thought we might see some type of freeze on this red stone on this uh this yellow stone try to get three that way but with this ice it looks like the team schuster will be 
throw this one back at Shot Rock right now. We've two tough to remove stones in the rings. John Schuster's first rock, sixth down. Really curling on them. John Landstein are hard on this one. Right, they're gonna change gears here, try to get the wicky ticky. Wick, tick, and roll. Nearly out. That rock curled hard on them right from the beginning. Just not operating at full confidence right now. They might not have uh, the ice totally figured out or their rocks or their throws. Team Schuster definitely a little out of sorts. Some rocks uh, gone before they, they even left the thrower's hand, it seems. Ethan Sampson considering a pick here. Just chuck some weight at that yellow stone. Who cares if it jams on the red? Just try to roll it out of the rings. I think that's what we'll go with here. Pretty tough to remove stone. They'll have to catch, let's say, less than a third of it to make sure that it, that leaves the rings. I don't think half quite does it. Of course, depending on what weight you, you're going to throw. Have the overhead queued for for us once this rock gets going. Ethan Sampson's last shot, last shot, six that. Getting caught on that curly side just like Team Schuster did. My goodness, look at that move. Bang. And oh, was it enough? Was it enough to get that rock far enough out? So there is no shot for two. Oh, it might be red still. Just barely, barely had enough momentum to spin that yellow to the side of the 12 foot. I think Team Sampson is still line two. Wow. What another great sweep by Coleman Thurston. Leaning on his broom, keeping that rock as straight as possible. That, that spot in the ice is definitely curling really hard. We saw Team Schuster get caught on that same spot in the shot previous. Well, whether this is for one or whether this is for two, John Schuster's last shot in the sixth end. Trying to gain some, some advantage here. Keep themselves in this game. Bang on the nose. Let's see what they say about these outside rocks. Might have to bring in the stick. It's one point for Schuster for sure. Just trying to find out if it's going to be two. Well, boys, if you're looking at it for that long, probably. Assume someone's going to get the stick. You would think this would be for the game to continue. Four points down without hammer. I don't know if it's mathematically reasonable for Schuster to keep playing. If Schuster does manage to get two here, make it a three-point game, then you know it's extremely rare. But those those uh, types of leads have been overcome before. Either way, both teams will show sportsmanship and whatever Team Schuster decides to do, that's what that's what will happen. From this overhead angle, it looks like the red has more of the rings, but with such a wide angle lens and, and such. It is yellow. 
will be a score of two for Team John Schuster. We will keep playing here. John Schuster down three points without hammer. We'll try to stage a comeback here in the seventh inning. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Seventh end here. Four Seasons Curling Club, Curve Curling Apparel. 2022 Curve Contender, Ethan Sampson, John Schuster. Two well-made shots to start things off. Center guard, come around. Definitely don't want that come around to be deep, so that's kind of the right the right way of missing Team Sampson. If they if you would consider that a miss, I'd say that's pretty darn well where they wanted it. Team Schuster once again will try to get another center guard in play here. Will it touch center line? Qualifies for the no tick rule. Those two rocks ain't going anywhere. Two nice shots from. Lead John Lansliner. Looks like another come around. Kind of tough situation. You don't want to be light and you don't want to be heavy. Kind of the only good spot for this rock is top four, top eight. Looks like they're sailing a little bit deep here. Hopefully not too deep. Yeah, that'll stop relatively in time. Definitely came a little deeper than they wanted. Team Schuster can use that to tap and freeze. Thing, thing is, Team Schuster is not going to be satisfied with one point here. They're going to try to steal two. And they certainly cannot let... Uh, Team Sampson score at all. Giving up even one point to Team Sampson right now would, would spell an almost certain end to the game. Being four points down is very difficult to come back from. And now that I've said that, just recently in Swift Current Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, at a, not even two weeks ago, the tournament I was covering for Curling Stadium Live, we saw it. Jock Gauthier gave up four points to, I'm forgetting, but it happened. Forced an extra end. Team Gauthier was able to win that game in the extra end, but hey, these things do happen. So four points, not mathematically game over, but almost certainly would do the trick. Healing time. Five rocks have come down the ice. And it's time for Team Samson to clean up yellow stones. That's what they'll be doing for the next five rocks of this end at least. Peel number one only removes one yellow stone. Team Schuster will take advantage of that. Still got a perfectly good center guard up there. Still have some obstacles in the 12 foot. Two 
<laughs> Skip John Schuster having some fun there, indicating that they haven't quite figured out exactly where the line is. So kind of waggles his broom back and forth, about a foot back and forth, <laughs> somewhat making fun of himself and their team. Trying to show that eh, we just haven't been able to figure this one out tonight, boys, but whoa, <laughs> not sure what happened to my camera there. A little bit of a tick off, not really what they were looking for. Still can't figure that line out. That that shot was not light. That would have had the weight to make it into the top four. So Team Schuster still really struggling with, with where to put the broom tonight. And it's it's showing. That'll give an opportunity to make a double here, addressing the second center guard now. Second rock thrower, Coleman Thurston. Bit of a drift on that slide. Sweepers are, are not touching it. He really did get outside there. He will get the top one. Managed to keep that rock in line enough to make the shot. Plies trying to replace that center guard, which they need. You need a center guard to steal, or you need a center guard to have a, a good chance at stealing without your opponent, without relying on a miss from your opponent. Steiner's been on this one the whole time. Looks like they're playing a tap, actually. Tap on the outside yellow. What a sweep. Really nice sweep by John Landsteiner, keeping that rock straight. Wow, really nice shot. That's going to create a scenario that's going to be a real problem for Team Samson. Um, they are shot rock right now. Team Samson perfectly satisfied with scoring one. Still looking to kind of clear things out, make sure that the top of the house is accessible. A lot of stones to come left this end. Yet this end. This is going to be a, a big, big decision in this game. So third Kevin Toome is going to skate down. And we'll talk about this one. Looks like they've come to a conclusion. Playing the inside there. Yeah, you know what? That's what I'd be playing too. Trying to sneak that double. Trying to send the yellow stone directly back and try and chip the yellow on the top of the button back. Well, it's pretty dangerous. A lot of bad things can happen there. You could send it square on to the button area and have Team Schuster line two at the end of that. So we'll take the easy way here. Just make sure that they get something moving down the middle. Not a lot of weight here. One, two. That's a good shot. And get rid of the protection that John Schuster was relying on to try and defend his forfeit situation. Team Schuster will still, at some point, have to move their own rock forward a little bit in order to count one. Hey, maybe they are going for a force and they want to be down four without, or sorry, with hammer in the last end. I would be trying to score, maybe even try to steal two if I could. If I was Team Schuster, try and make it a one point game for the last end. Looks like a guard or a draw coming up from Chris Plies. You would think so with that ice. A lot of curling to do on this one. Really waiting for this one. And another outside, outside shot. Chris Plies can't seem to find that line.
Ethan Sampson kind of weirded out, like, knows he shouldn't feel comfortable with what's going on in the rings right there, but also understands that Team Schuster's not shot rock yet. There is no need for Team Sampson to make a play on that button area yet. When they do, it's going to exchange who is shot rock, and from that point forward, Team Schuster will just guard, guard, guard. So Ethan knows that he, he wants to do something about it, but there's just there's just no need yet. So making a play on this yellow here, it's another dumped intern and Kevin Tuma that turn has been giving him trouble all game long just really soft on the handle twisting the rock away from his body he's not throwing that rock straight at all that's the third really really bad intern from Kevin Tuna so far this game is going to result in a flashed hit Easy to do as a right-hand thrower to come over the top of a hit, going inside out, away from the center line. That's a common mistake. It's just something he'll have to practice a, a few uh, few sessions and iron that out with a coach. Opportunity for John Schuster. They're going to make a play on this stone now. Potentially lying three points at the end of this one. I try to keep that red rock around in the back of the forefoot, but John Schuster will, would love to lie to here. Waiting on the curl for this stone. He's been getting caught straight on this outturn quite a few times. Curl is coming in now. Looks like they're satisfied with a freeze. That's what that's going to be. Nice freeze rock. Bumped it just enough, I think, for shot stone. I don't see how Team Samson scores here, even with two shots remaining. I don't see how, how Team Samson's going to be able to clear out enough of a, a, a space, even without John Schuster throwing his last rock. In fact, this might be a scenario where you kind of concede a point and just play to give up one. <laughs> Looking at this angle, that'll move everything to the right off the forefoot. If they can bang this yellow stone into the three stones that are occupying the button in the forefoot, everything will roll right. Clearing out the forefoot. Good instinct. Certainly doesn't have anything up the middle. Playing a tap tap on the top two yellows will only leave yellow shot two. John Schuster will guard that happily. And then you're shooting against two. This way, you'll still be shooting against multiple stones, but in such a way that it will be off the forefoot, you'll, you'll have a more realistic shot at, at scoring your single point, which of course is the goal. First rock, Skip Ethan Sampson, throwing some heat here. We'll have to watch themselves. This, this spot has been floating or not curling very much. One and two, they'll take off the top one. That's going to be a pretty good shot regardless. Clears up the outturn, forces John Schuster to come and make another play down the middle there, thus potentially leaving a double for Team Sampson. That's going to be a big old mission accomplished for Team Sampson there. Nice rock. less ice than last time. Notice that the Team Schuster was waiting for that last one to curl, so they're going to make an adjustment. I think it appears to be about two or three inches less. So 
Skip John Schuster's last stone, seventh end, trying to stage a comeback here. We'll leave it on the split screen view, give you both, both sides of this rock coming into the rings. Definitely less ice, definitely a tighter path. Curling a little more. They're still going to have Steiner go hard on this one. Lies one, lies two. So that's a made shot. John Schuster, probably a little more weight than they were, they were needing, but makes it happen regardless. Once again, I don't think Team Sampson can score. I think you're, you're better off conceding one point here. Go to the last end with Hammer up to be a pretty satisfying thing. Kind of a scary situation here, Ethan Sampson. Staying cool, staying calm. But uh, definitely not the way they drew this one up. This is Team Schuster's strongest end of the game by far. Team Sampson trying to give up only one. Don't want to overcurl, but if we want to sit right on the lid here. Good sweep. One rock goes. One rock stays. It'll be a steal of one. Great end by John Schuster. Just with a 6-3 score, now a 6-4 score. They'll have to do just as good, maybe even a little better, in the eighth end to try and tie this game as they go for a steal of two when we come back. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back, eighth end. Pretty crucial miss here from Team John Schuster, not leaving their guard on the center line, thus leaving it open to be ticked. It will be ticked. Only slightly out of the way, though. In order for John Schuster to steal two this end, they're actually going to need multiple guards kind of covering multiple sections of the forefoot, so not that bad of a deal. Not, I not ideal to leave that rock open to be ticked. John Landsteiner will try again. Put one up there. In the right spot. Right spot this time. Quite on the center line again. It will open the door for yet another tick. A lot of shots from Team Schuster this game. Close enough to make the shot, but just through some type of misunderstanding between the sweepers, the shoot, the thrower, the skip, they just haven't quite gotten the spot that they needed. Just a little bit of a team-wide difficulty throughout this game. 
and Team Schuster. Not quite the sharpness we're used to seeing. On the other side, Team Samson has put together a really impressive game. They clearly had a game plan to go after Team Schuster early and often. Um, even though they jumped out to an early advantage, some early leads, they did not change their strategy at all until they were up three in the fourth end. Chasing uh, Team Schuster Stones to the wing, successfully doing so four times in a row, limiting John Schuster to one point in that fourth end, and really that's when the advantage really set in for Team Samson here. Uh, Team Schuster kind of getting it together in the seventh end, really putting together an impressive, an impressive end. Uh, left Team Samson no other option than to give Schuster one point as their goal heading into the end, and they were able to accomplish it. A lot of work to be done. Huff turns around in anger. Looks like his slider got caught on something as he was sliding out. Well, he should turn back around, though, because his rock is going to end up in a pretty good spot. Really going sideways here, but that's going to be a counting stone. Man, just look from that straight on. <laughs> look how much that curled. That thing could have easily picked in his hands. He may have, uh, he may have kind of shoved the rock, gave it a little twist as it was picking, trying to uh, free it from whatever debris it may have picked up. Uh, that's why the throw was, was so, so odd. Anyways, Team Samson's going to recognize the most dangerous stone here being this off-center guard. And if they can successfully remove this thing, it's going to take two pure misses from Team Samson in order to... Uh, in order to get back into this one. He's going to nose this peel. Gets lucky, catches a back one. That is certainly not the way that they drew it up. Pretty strong game so far. Oh, not pretty strong, really strong game, especially on the sweep for second Coleman Thurston. That's a miss. Did not want to leave your own stone occupying that centerline area, so Team Schuster's gonna gonna treat that as a pure miss, even though it did remove a, a rock closer to the, the eight foot or 12 foot. This uh, this stone that's covering the four foot is definitely more important than the stealing effort. All Schuster really needs is one guard. Especially if it's up high like that, it's not very easy to run back. Colin Huffman likes to slide a little better. Nothing caught on his slider or rock that time. Stone is gliding much more, much more true. Much more consistently. It doesn't look like it has anything underneath it. So he's trying to get some curl out of this one at the end. They're going to leave this one more or less wide open. Just missing outside pretty consistently, Team Schuster. This, uh, this whole game. Especially on the outturns, it seems. Fifth end, saw Skip John Schuster and third Chris Plies miss three draws in a row significantly. Two of them significantly outside, one of them light, but that was really the story of the game. Team Samson getting three points in that fifth end. Taking a 6-1 lead. Here's your standard hit and stick. Nice shot there to finish eight ends from Coleman Thurston. Real strong game from the Samson front end. Almost every, nearly every end, creating and maintaining an advantage. Lead uh, Marius Klinas, Klinas, and second Coleman Thurston. I'd say you got to give them the edge over John Landsteiner and Colin Huffman this game. Struggles kind of on both sides for Kevin Tuma and, and Chris Plies. Team Sampson able to get more out of those shots, but both both players kind of having their, their misses. Uh, Chris Plies faced with some more challenging shots, some hit and rolls, some, some tap raises, that type of thing. So understandable when he's not getting the exact results he was looking for out of out of those shots. Kevin Tuma making some some shots look easy, but really that in turn, especially on the soft weight hits, has been a real problem for him today. Getting over top of those, getting a lot of over curls, but Still acceptable games from both thirds. And of course, Skips. Ethan Sampson taking the clear advantage. Uh, Skip John Schuster 
a little confused about where to put the broom for his shots, missing some line calls, missing a, a draw significantly light, uh, whereas Ethan's been pretty bang on all game. Never afraid to take on a tough call, a tough shot, is uh, Ethan Sampson. Even when the scoreboard advantage would, would give him more than enough excuse to kind of take it easy, just play the simple shots, take one at a time. Nope, he's lined up the best uh, the best result for the scenario and went ahead and thrown that rock. Kudos to that risk-taking and uh, confident, aggressive tactical decision made by Ethan Sampson tonight. It's led them to this situation, two up with Hammer. against one of the world's best, John Schuster. Little heavy on this one. It's gonna occupy the, no, it'll sail back to the mid, halfway through the eight foot and 12 foot. That's not gonna be good enough. The whole goal here is you want, you're counting on a miss from Skip Ethan Sampson, or I, I guess third Kevin Tuma here. So if you're gonna get that miss, you want your rock to be in perfect position for for re-guarding or for, for drawing another one in there. and. Chris Plies being in the back of the house like that is not going to do it. That's not going to be in a position where they're going to be confident in stealing a point, or in this case, two. Doing the math here, Team Samson knows that if they keep eliminating a single Schuster Rock every time, that's going to be a GG. Good game. A win for Team Samson. So they'll start with Kevin Tuma's last stone here. Just trying to simply remove this yellow rock. Might get a double. One rock, stuffs it. Team Schuster got caught on that a couple times, stuffing their doubles. Close rock nonetheless though. Fairly good results. Team Schuster will try to plug both of these John Schuster stones behind that off center guard, hoping for two misses from Team Sampson, or at least a half miss on, on Sampson's first one, and, and uh, a missed draw or hit on his last one, so counting on some luck here, but the best thing that Team Schuster can do is just plug both these stones in the top of the forefoot and see what happens, see if they're able to put enough pressure on Ethan Sampson to get an extra end out of this. With quite a bit of luck, they might count three. Take the game right right here in the eighth end. Certainly have the situation, some uh, kind of a tight area that needs to be drawn through. It's gonna be difficult to play a lot of weight through that area. Again, struggling to get the, the curl that they were looking for. So it was a little deep as well, so. Seems like Skip Ethan Sampson had already made up his mind. I'm peeling this guard, no matter what happens. Sensible call. He'll have some type of shot at the Schuster pile after this guard is ripped. I mean, uh, Team Schuster could choose to replace the guard, force Sampson into a drawing scenario. Team Schuster could also play a rock into the rings, lie three, see if uh, Samson doesn't roll out on a potential hit, but for any of that to matter, Ethan's got to make this peel right here. Ethan's first rock in the last end. Eighth end, I should say. Potentially the last end. Super not touching this. Looks A-okay. Peels that one across the face. Leaves both Schuster stones exposed, and it's decision time now for John Schuster. <clears throat> Looks like he's going to try to get the best of both worlds, lie three, and guard his uh, existing two stones. So he's going to try to put this one just barely into the eight foot. Try to count three while lining his stones up in such a way that can make a potential double quite difficult, and also a draw into the scoring area difficult. Team Schuster really kind of getting it together the, these last few ends, making stringing quite a few shots in a row. Unfortunately for Team Schuster, the damage had already been done. Steal of one, steal of two, and uh, giving up three after being forced themselves. That's just a lot of ground to give up and uh, try to get back in the game. So 
If only there's two more ends in this game, this would look a lot different. But there is not. This is the eighth and final end. Barring, of course, any extra ends. And Team Schuster will have to make it work right now. John Schuster's last stone, eighth end. Sweepers like it. Definitely want to get a little bit of curl out of this one. Especially if they want third shot. And that's just perfect. That is exactly where Skip John Schuster placed his broom when they called that shot. Wow. Really impressive work by Team Schuster in N7 and 8 to, to create this type of pressure. Wow. Up 6 to 1, Team Samson was at one point. Forced Team Schuster to, uh, to two points in that that seven, that uh, fifth end. For it all to come back to this, a pretty tough double. Well, you know what? I'm not going to call it a tough double, but I will. I will say it's uh, at least average, perhaps even more challenging than that. Ethan Sampson, game in his hand. Try to win it for his team here in the eighth end. Super's not touching this one. Staying close. One rock, two rocks, and they will spill it far enough. Beautiful shot, Ethan Sampson. Well-deserved victory for this young team out of, out of Minnesota. Caught Team Schuster on a bit of an off night, but uh, credit where credit's due. Team Samson really laying it, laying it down on them, especially on the front ends. Stones, the first four stones at the end. Very consistent advantage, especially through the first five ends for Team Samson. Laying it on, stayed on the gas, even though they had some early success. Just kept that pressure on and really capitalized on it. So big victory here for Team Samson. With, this, uh, with the end of this game... Feel free to jump over to one of the other games still on the ice here. Four Seasons Curling Club. Let's see, uh, here, I'll take you over to the home camera. See women's, women's action still going on, so check out that Curling Zone YouTube channel or USA Curling channels or however you're watching these games. Jump on over, finish the action here. Draw an eye at uh, Four Seasons Curling Club. I've been Rory McCusker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for jumping in the, tap, the chat. I want to say thank you to Coats of Curling for their donation of $10. Hey, I can tell you exactly where that money's going. Directly into our production costs are uh, some better cameras, some high, more high-definition audio equipment, and some easier ways of you folks logging on and watching the curling that you love. So thank you for all this support. Thank you for chiming in on the chat. We'll see you next time. My name's Rory McCusker. Bye-bye. on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch.